Again, hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here doing another Marvel Legends figure review on the 2016 Spider-Man Wave slash Absorbing Man Build-A-Figure Wave Villains of the Night Jack-O-Lantern. If you're trying to pick this figure up now, you can get the whole wave at Big, 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 Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. I'm already liking that Jack-O-Lantern head. That looks really cool on the side. You can see the running change is Morbius. They are Villains of the Night, see? And you can see both of them right over there. Very cool picture. And then on the back, you can see read it if you want to read it pause it now and here's the other figures from the wave and on the other side you get jack-o-lantern right over there all right let's get to it and crack this thing open and here's jack-o-lantern out of the packaging i gotta say i like this figure of course we're getting the reused body mold from bucky not to be confused with bucky cap but bucky himself is being reused and it was also reused for the ghost figure they have a lot of added parts to this though i especially like this new head sculpt and overall this figure is very fun to photograph i had a good time taking pictures of this figure Pretty tricky to pose around though, so I did find it a bit complicated getting him in this particular pose over here. Of course, I needed to get the Mafex stand for that over there. But anyway, let's take a closer look at the accessories that come with this figure. He comes with quite a bit, and then we'll take a closer look at Jack O'Lantern. So we get three accessories for this figure, aside from the Build-A-Figure parts. Now looking right over here, we get a pumpkin bomb with this nice translucent orange. I like that you can see the Jack O'Lantern face in there. You get that little mouth sculpted in there. You get the little eyes. Kind of tricky to see. We also get this really nice sickle, which I really like a lot. Lot. Nice silver paint apps and a lot of sculpted detail in this. There's even a little bit of a black wash over it. I like that a lot. That looks really nice. And then he has his rocket broom. Looking pretty cool with the translucent orange over here. You know, as it gets a little bit thinner, it gets, turns into yellow. So it's just no paint on this at all, aside from the silver and the brown right there. That looks pretty sweet. Then he can hold everything okay. Wedge the fingers right in there so you can get him to hold that. See, so that works out all right. And preferably the left hand over here, but I think you can get him to hold it in either hand, but I think it looks a little bit better right there. Let's see, getting him to hold it on this side doesn't look, uh, yeah, it's a little bit trickier, but you can get him to do it. There you go, see, that works just fine. Now, it did take me a minute to figure out how to pose the figure on the broomstick. At first, I thought you're supposed to plug these little edges right here into the peg holes at the bottom of his feet somehow, because uh, he does stand on these two little pieces right here, but it doesn't really work out. Best thing to do is just weave it through this hand over here, and then just pose the feet accordingly. See, it's workable, you can work with it. Now the coolest part of this figure for me is this beautiful head sculpt. I love how clean the paint came out on this and I love the sculpted flames coming out of the eyes right there. That is so awesome man and I love the wash over the pumpkin head over there. The paint looks just spectacular. I love the really bright yellow paint for the mouth and the eyes in there too. It's just very well done. I have no complaints about this at all. What I really like about this is that it looks like they used the same color right over here, but because of the pumpkin head, it makes it look like it's going from orange to yellow. It just works out really nicely. Really, really well sculpted flames over here. And if you turn the lights down, it's really fun to look at as well. Look at that. That's really cool. Oh, man. This is just going to be a lot of fun to take a lot of pictures with. I'm really digging it a lot. Now, looking at the rest of it, you can see the ghost parts right there. So this is a combination of ghost pieces and Bucky pieces. And I think the silver paint apps came out pretty nice on this. I like that. You know, we don't get any kind of shadowing effect on the green areas or anything like that. Then the pumpkin bombs right here in this holster could have been painted a little bit more. You know, you can see that they're going with a brown strap going across and then it's supposed to be orangish or brown I don't know it's like a darker brown it's not quite orange so the pumpkin bombs right here yeah they look a little bit weird here's coming around the back of it not looking too shabby at all again nice silver paint apps on this then looking at the legs over here and on the boots yeah it's not too bad I like that textured detail right over there on the calves Liking that. And as far as articulation goes, it's not the greatest. You cannot tilt his head up at all. It does not move up whatsoever. And it does look down a little bit. You do get side to side movement over there. No pivot at all. Shoulders move outward. They move forward. Very nice clicking. And you get a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and you get a forearm swivel over here. No wrist hinge at all. That bothers me. You do get an ab crunch that moves very far forward and pretty far back as well. You get a waist swivel. You get these ball jointed hips that move outward, and you can kick them forward, you get an upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees, and then the ankles move 
down. They don't move up as much as I'd want them to. It'd be a little bit easier to, uh, you could shimmy it like that. Okay, so that's a little bit scary, but it will do it. And then you get angle pivot. So Ghost is standing a little over seven inches tall. Then here's Jack-O-Lantern next to Bucky and Ghost. So you can really see how the Jack-O-Lantern figure is a combination of these two over here. From the shoulders to the elbows, along from the hips to the knees come from Bucky. But then the torso section over here, along with from the knees down and elbows down, comes straight from Ghost. And then here's Jack-O-Lantern next to Mad Jack, which is Mysterio in the Jack-O-Lantern costume. And thank you so much Century Productions for this figure. And then here's Jack-O-Lantern next to the other figures from this wave, which I've already reviewed. And then here's Jack-O-Lantern next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Okay, I always wanted to know if this would work. <laughs> Sweet! And then here's Jack-O-Lantern posed with his sickle in his right hand and the pumpkin bomb in the left hand. Looking pretty cool. So I like him having him posed like this. We'll say that the figure is tricky to stand though. He wants to fall over very easy and then getting him posed onto the broomstick is pretty tricky as well. So that's my biggest complaint with this figure. Otherwise, I really like it a lot. And I hope you guys liked my review a lot as well. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe and click any of these boxes over here if you want more shart in your face. If you want to support this YouTube channel, check out the Patreon account. Your guys' help is very much appreciated. If you want to see channel updates, go ahead and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and go to MarvelousNews.com for the latest in Marvel-related news. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! That's crispy. So once you get that... that